Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial we're going to talk about tarnished silver platters and what you can do with them. Um, I'm going to give you some ideas on where to get them and anyways I have something really fun over here to show you. As you are hopping on say hello, let me know where you're watching from, feel free to sprinkle and um, let's just jump right in. Okay, so I have found that there are two real, well, three really good places to find tarnished silver platters like this. This is one of my favorites. I have not painted this. This is my other all-time favorite. Both of these came from Goodwill. And if you hit Goodwill or another thrift store the right day of the week, the right moment, you can sometimes find these for $5 and under. And um, another place you can look is, if you are my age, um, we have china closets, and I had all kinds of stuff in the bottom of my china closet that I didn't even realize was there. <laughs> so look in your china closet or cabinets or wherever you store uh, like stuff for formal occasions. And then last, ask around. Ask your mom, your sister, your grandma, your next door neighbor uh, if they have any tarnished silver platters that they're not using anymore that you could have. So those are the three sources. Um, I also see them frequently at this antique mall that I love to go to, but they're like $20. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. I don't want to spend more than 5 or $6 on a tarnished silver platter. And let me tell you one more thing and then we'll jump in. I usually don't clean the tarnish off. I usually don't, um, you know, buff them up so they're super shiny. I kind of like this look. Okay, let me set these over here. All right, over the years I've done a ton of different things with silver platters. And there's really two kinds. There's a kind, and it's impossible to tell unless you have a magnet in your pocket when you're out thrifting. Some of them are magnetized. And this is something I made around five years ago. These are vintage uh, silver um, buttons. And I have just glued a little magnet on the back of each. So this particular platter has a Christmas tree on it. I've also made a cross. Um, you could make, you could do all kinds of things. Flowers, oh my gosh. Um, so who would have ever known that this particular platter would be magnetized and then this one would not. So nothing's gonna stick to this. Um, and that doesn't matter if you plan to paint it. So one idea, is to create some little objects, buttons. They could be mother of pearl buttons, they could be colored buttons. You're gonna to wanna to just snip off the backs, the shanks, and hot glue or E6000 them to some of these little button magnets that look like this. And then you can decorate a platter. Um, another thing you can do is you can paint them and put them in a book stand. And here are a couple that I want to show you. I think most of us, when we're thinking about tarnished silver platters and doing a craft with them, we automatically go to the idea that we're gonna paint it black, like this one, and then we'll decorate it. But you don't have to do black. You can do absolutely any color you want. And this was one that I made probably two years ago. I got it at Goodwill, it was probably five or six dollars. I painted it with a dark blue paint. I cannot honestly remember what that paint was called. And then I used this beautiful stencil from MagnoliaDIY.com, let me find it. And some white chalk paste. And then when I was all finished, I used a cruddy brush 
and I did a little bit of dry brushing around the edges. So this is a favorite. I am not planning to wash it off anytime soon, but you certainly can. Um, you can wash it off and if it leaves a little bit of a, like a shadow, then just put one more coat of whatever color paint you want over the top. Here's another one that I made um, quite a while ago. I made it for a Christ in Crafting. And it says, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. My God, that is what you are. And we talked about Moses and how he separated the, well, God did it. But Moses was his instrument to get the um, Israelites to safety away from the Egyptians. So this is black paint, a beautiful stencil, and then I just added this with some brushes to sort of look like waves. So those are some other ideas. Blue, black, um, cream. I do cream a lot, and here is one. <laughs> this has been sitting on my desk here for around three and a half or four years. I don't believe this stencil design is available anymore from magnoliadiy.com, but I wanted to show it to you because it says, I still remember, okay, I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. And what I did with this one is I painted the whole front of it cream, and this is a rope that you would use to create a laundry line outside from Walmart. I hot glued a couple rows of it here, and then I made some cute little flowers at the bottom, and this looks great in the stand. So, cream is another color that you can do. Um, and I have some ready to go that we're going to do. I have one also that I'm going to show you. All right, let's do the one that I'm going to show you first. This is one of my favorite silver trays. It has been reimagined, repurposed uh, at least five or six times. Um, it had kind of this dusty blue desk Waverly paint on it. And I had the darling little white, uh, it was called Little Hair and Roses. It was a darling um, rabbit for Easter on it in I think I used white chalk paste and it was beautiful, but now I'm ready to move on. So I washed it off. I put another two coats of plaster. This is Waverly paint from Walmart over the top. We're gonna get to crafting in just a second, but I wanna tell you all of this. Um, so I painted two coats on it yesterday and then I stenciled this one. Using this stencil that I've used a lot. You guys, these stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com are reusable many, 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 many times. They can get a little stained on the front, which just means that you love them. They still work just fine. So I used this stencil that says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, verse 14. And for this one, it's going to go on uh, probably in the kitchen or on the butler's pantry going from the kitchen to our dining room. I used this um, chalk paste that is called Glittering Black. And it you don't see the sparkle so much. It's like a dark, dark gray almost that looks great with the metal of a silver platter. So that is one piece that I did in preparation for today to show you. And I have another one here that we're gonna finish up. Thank you so much for the stars, Terry. I appreciate that. Okay, this was just a goofy little white, small uh, tarnished silver platter and I painted the whole entire thing using plaster, uh, Waverly paint from Walmart. My favorite. This stuff is great for silver platters. And um, we're going to put a design in here that will go with the other one. We're going to use the same uh, glittering black chalk paste. And I think we're going to just do something really simple 
like this flat, these flowers from this, perhaps you were created for such a time as this, stencil, which is from the book of Esther, chapter 4, 14. So I think we're going to do that. And then I'm going to show you how you can enhance the edging. And then I have two more platters here that I've painted with two coats. This one actually, I may have only put one coat of this blue, which is called Ocean. It probably could use another coat, but I don't have time. <laughs> um, so we're going to do this one and this one with um, some of these beautiful Faith stencils. Oh, you're so sweet, Terry. I really appreciate that. Okay, so let's do this, and then I'll show you how to do this edging. And what I'm talking about is this. Isn't that pretty? Did you know you could do that? And because I'm using chalk paste, you can wash it off. Silver platters can be thrown in a soapy sink of water that's warm or kind of hot-ish. You can scrub them with a kitchen sponge, or you could use the Magnolia sponge, which is called a stencil cleaner. You could use that too. Um, and then you can, if it has a little bit of a shadow on it from the previous design, you just add a coat of paint and then it can be something different for the next season, which I love to use the same objects over and over and over and just to tweak them a little bit here and there. So I see lots of people on. Thank you for joining me and thank you so much to everyone who did stars. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. So this is a beautiful stencil and I'm gonna just do the flower part here and then we will do uh, the edging. Okay, and this is what is called a tacky towel. It's meant to make your stencils just a little bit less sticky for two reasons. Number one, I don't want to pull up the paint that is on here. And number two, I don't want to stretch my stencil out of shape so it'll be difficult to use in the future. So that's why you do um, fuzzing. I could also fuzz on this kind of a t not here, but on the t-shirt or on a pair of jeans or on a low lint um, tea towel. There's lots of things that you could fuzz on. Okay, I think that I just want to do the flower. And if it's not perfectly centered, I can wash it off and start over. So I'm going to use, you're going to want to use chalk paste for this kind of project. And once you get it on, after you've painted your surface, if you want to keep that design forever or until you repaint your surface, you can do a coat of clear matte silver spray like this from Walmart. This is Rust-Oleum two times ultra clear, ultra cover, matte clear. So that's what I would use. Okay, let me find a squeegee. And I'm going to start here at the bottom so I don't forget that I'm not doing the other stuff. Oh, thank you, Terry. She says she loves my shirt. I got this one or two years ago at Loft on sale. <laughs> I don't shop there unless they have good sell. And they just read, and they have cute stuff that is, it's, I mean, they have some stuff that's not super trendy that you can wear year after year after year. Most of my clothes are like that. I've had them for a while. Okay, so I have a blob of chalk paste on this. And I'm just putting it on the top of the stencil and pushing it through the holes. Don't want the ester down there. I just want the flowers. Um, this kind of a medium, this chalk paste from MagnoliaDIY.com won't hurt your stencils. And when you get stencils, you want to Take care of them so that you can use them next year and the year after and the year after and the year after. So this is what it looks like. 
gonna look up close and make sure I got everything covered, and then I'm gonna stop. And let's take a little peek. Oh, it looks so pretty! I'm not sure if it's 100% centered, but good enough. So I'm gonna throw this over here in my tub of water. to soak until I can get back out to the kitchen to wash it. Um, I'll just use cool water in the sprayer in my kitchen sink. Sometimes I'll use one of those um, stencil cleaner sponges, a little dish soap, easy peasy. Okay, so this is what that looks like, and it's gonna be sitting with this. So I think it's gonna make sense together. All right, so to do this edging, what I did was I took um, a couple blobs of this same color chalk paste and I put it on a paper plate. You don't want to leave the caps off of these because they can get right out. And I am using a teeny tiny little piece of a kitchen sponge that has a little scrubby on it. It's not wet, so it's real stiff, and that's what you want. Oops. Okay, and I'm just going to dip my sponge into this chalk paste, and I'm basically going to rub it around the edge, and where it is, where the design is raised, it will grab it. You could do this with paint also, but I wanted it to be the same color as what I was doing um, the design with. So can you see? So that's why I opted to use this chalk paste. And I'm kind of looking to see where's my design so I can hit all the raised bits. If I got it too dark in one place, I could wash it off with um, either a wipe or a kitchen sponge. I might need to touch up the paint a little bit, but then I can do it again. And I do this technique a lot on other kinds of projects. I don't think I've done this technique on a silver platter before. So that's kind of fun. Okay, and I think that's probably sufficient. What do you think? That really makes the edging on this particular little, it was a, a little um, tarnished silver platter that I rescued from Goodwill. That really makes that stand out. And um, I will get pictures close up of that so you can see. So I wanted to show you that. And then I wanted to talk about different colors that you can use. Um, to go in your decor, because honestly, I know we kind of all think that these tarnished silver platters need to be painted in black, but they don't. All of this Waverly paint is great for tarnished silver platters, and I usually don't really clean my platters off too much before I paint them, but this is uh, one blackish paint called Ink. There's a one called Dusk which is a kind of gray-blue, plaster, snow white. I just pulled a few out to lift up and show you. In fall, you could do pumpkin. I think that's what this is called. Yeah, pumpkin. You could do agave, which I have this one that I'm going to show you. I painted it in agave. You could do ballet slipper. I mean, honestly, you could do this light blue called pool. Or this one called ocean, which is what I did the top one. Um, so you're going to want to just put a regular coat of paint. Go up the side or as far as you want. You can cover the whole entire surface or just the center part. Let that dry and then do another coat. And then you're all ready to go. You could spray them outside if you wanted with a clear matte sealer spray to um, just to protect that painted surface a little bit. But I didn't. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully it will be good. Okay, for this one, 
I was kind of thinking about doing this stencil if I can find it. I didn't grab it. Even the winds and the waves obey him, Matthew 8, 27. And this was just a canvas project that I did last summer. Let me look at my drawer. I honestly think, you guys, that if you're, if you're a Christ follower, that having God's word in your home, throughout your home, I mean, everywhere I look, I see God's word. That it is so good for you, and it's good for the people who live in your home to see how important God's word is. It's also great if you have guests over because it can give an opening uh, between you and that guest, that person maybe that you don't know that well, to talk about Jesus Christ. So I think they're great to have stuff like that around the house. Let me just look for a second to see if I can find that. Ah, here it is. This is also a cool one that would be good for blue. And it says, be salty, Matthew 5, 13. And that, that salty means uh, let your, your faith shine and show to others. So that is an option too, but I think we're going to use this one if it will fit. Yes, I think it will. This is called Even the Winds and the Waves Obey Him, Matthew 8, 27. And um, I like this stencil a lot in the summer. I've had it for one or two years, I can't remember, but it's a beautiful stencil. You can also just use the uh, waves if you want. I'm going to take it off the backing sheet, and it's still pretty sticky. I'm going to fuzz it a couple of times. All right, I could also fuzz it right here. Or I could fuzz it on my jeans. But this towel right here, it's called a tacky towel. It is designed to fuzz your stencils. Um, this green side is. The, the gray is so that once you wash a stencil, you can pat it dry if you want. And I'm always in a hurry for my stencils to dry, be dry, so I can either use them again or put them away. Oh, and I wanted to mention one other thing, and that is that this particular tray will take magnets. So it's just completely luck of the draw. It has nothing to do with the quality of the tray. In fact, I have found that the, the trays that have um, more magnetic ability, they're usually not as good of quality. And they have something on the inside of it. Because these are all plated. This is not solid silver. This is a silver plated tray. Um, but they have something inside of them, lead or something, I don't know, some base metal that is magnetized. And others just don't. Right there. Okay, so let's do this one. And I could put this in a book stand. Um, there's so many things I could do with it. There is not really going to be room to do the Matthew, the, the uh, address in the Bible for this. So I may come back and put that little part of the stencil in another place. We'll see. And I'm just going to use plain old white chalk paste. But Magnolia also has, um, this is glittering white. Let's try a little bit and then I'll peek. And we'll see if we can see it well enough. Because I want you to be able to read the words. Anyways, it has a little bit of a shimmery look to it. So let me put just a little bit right here on the top of that E. And we'll take a little peek. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll use the glittering and we'll use the plain white on the next one. So I'm just going to put a couple of blobs on my stencil. So how is every 
everyone doing today? Tell me in the comments if you have rescued silver platters from a thrift store before, or maybe if you have rescued them from the inside of a china closet where they were not getting any use or action. Tell me that in the comments. Well, I concentrate on not messing this up. This would be a great design to put on a tote bag for summer or for a Bible study. Okay, and as usual, I have way too much. I'm not going to throw that away. I am just going to lift it up with my squeegee. Get the big blobs off. And put it back in my little pot. Okay, where can I put this? Let me throw this in my tub over here. create a hanger on the back of it if I wanted to hang it on the wall. Oh, this is really pretty. And the waves are really pretty too. Oh my goodness. You can't see the um, little bit of glitter that is there on this picture. Oh look, I still have my Goodwill sticker on here that says that I paid $2.99 <laughs> for this. So this is going to go over here in my tub. And I am just pushing it down until I can get out to the kitchen to clean it off. And I'm going to put my cap back on this. Terry says she loves the tray. Thank you, Terry. I love it too. So this could be set, I mean, I would, one person responded to the post that I put up earlier saying I was going to be doing a video on rescuing trays from thrift stores, and she said that she uses a bunch of trays that aren't even decorated, propped against the walls in her kitchen behind her stove, and that it makes everything look sparkly and fresh. So that's another idea too. I've also seen people create two-tiered and three-tiered stands using these. I have not figured that out yet. Okay, and then this last one. This is a beautiful, really heavy silver platter that has this gorgeous edging on it. And it has been a hundred different colors. So for today, I was just thinking, let's do something different and let's use this paint from Waverly that is called Agave. The blue uh, was also from Waverly and it was called Ocean. Christy says she loves this idea. Her mom passed away in 2022 and no one wanted to polish the silver. I would love doing this to preserve them. Yes! And, you know, somebody once upon a time loved these pieces. But then, they, I guess, I don't know. I still love silver, but they fell out of style or something. And people really don't, we don't use silver when we're entertaining. So why, why have it hidden in a china closet or in a cabinet when you can bring it out and enjoy it and share God's word on it? I think that's just a great thing to do. So, I have tons of options here. This is two coats, by the way. This one says, be salty. This one is that, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. Um, I probably wouldn't use this square one that is the one that is wonderfully and fearfully made. This is a beautiful stencil, but I probably won't use this today. This is chosen first. Peter 2.9. Um, I might use this one. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
Psalm 150, verse 6. So let's set that one aside. I was also kind of thinking about doing this one that says, Great is thy faithfulness. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23. This is a pretty one, but I probably won't use it because it has a border that I think is going to look funky with an oval piece of silver. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4. This is also a beautiful one, but it's going kind of the wrong way. And this one says, for everything there is a time. Ecclesiastes 3, 1. This one says, grow in grace. 2 Peter 3, 18. This one, right, and oh my gosh, this is just a small look at the different faith and Bible verse stencil designs that you can find at magnoliadiy.com. That is why I became interested in this company three years ago. Okay, this one says, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. Psalm 91.4. This is beautiful, but again, it's kind of going the wrong way. This one says, she is strong. This is one of those Proverbs 31. I kind of thought about that, and then I kind of thought about this one, too. Made to Worship, Psalm 95, 1. So, those were my thoughts, what I pulled out. I think that those other ones are beautiful, but I think this one would, would be the prettiest. And it just says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, Psalm 150, verse 6. Okay. So, I don't know how sticky this stencil is at this point in time. Oh, it's still pretty sticky. So, I'm going to fuzz it. The beautiful stencils, Dana, come from magnoliadiy.com, but I will get you a list. Um, so, anyone else who wants to just look and see what, I'll do a list that has all the fake designs, and I'll... Um, answer your comment with that and also send you a personal message with that list um, so anyone who wants to take a peek because there were a lot of other beautiful designs that I could have chosen okay so pull this over here um, I'm going to get a ruler which probably sounds weird because I don't usually ever measure but I want to make sure that the ends of it are about the same distance. Okay, this is about not quite two. I think that's just fine. I'm not sure if it's straight, but we'll find out. And I can always wash it off, touch it up with that paint if I need to, and redo it. I have used this stencil quite a bit. And let's choose just the plain white so you can see the difference in what that looks like. This is white chalk paste. Also a little bit thick. I am taking a little spritzer of distilled water. So I'm going to put a couple small squirts in there and stir this up. This chalk paste is almost gone, so it's probably about time to get some more plain white, but I'm going to use every single bit of it. Let's just put that on there. When you're working with chalk paste that is a little dry, you do need to work because you don't want it to dry in the mesh of your stencil and then when you pull it up to have you know everything that you apply come up with the stencil okay so we're gonna work quickly And I have way too much chalk paste on here, as usual. I don't know why I do that. OK. 
Okay, so I've got it on most of the design. I'm just going to pull that off where it's lumpy and clumpy. Just a little bit for this little design down here. Okay, let's look. Let's see what we've got going here. I have it all over my fingers, so I'm going to be careful. Oh, it's good! Okay, I don't know how I got this little blob right here, but when everything's dry, I'll take it off, probably with either an antibacterial wipe or a Q-tip that's soaked in water or something. I'm putting it in my tub. This is so pretty. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? I love this color. Agave from Walmart. It's Waverly Paint. And then I just used this plain old white chalk paste. I, it's not old. I just mean it's not the glittering new one. It's just your basic white, which is what I use most of the time. And um, it looks beautiful. I'm going to throw these in my tub. My little one. So that is what I wanted to show you. All of these can then be set seated in um, plate holders or propped up against a wall um, or I've seen people use really strong glue on the back of these like E6000 and something like a tab from a Diet Coke can. You glue it to the back and then you can hang it on a nail. Um, there's lots of ways that you can display this but let everything that has breath praise the Lord Psalm 150, verse 6. Isn't that pretty? So, I will get pictures of everything. It turned out pretty. This is the one that I just finished up. And then, this is the one that we just did. And well, I guess maybe what one thing I want to point out here is that the um, glittering white chalk paste is not as solid as the white. So just keep that in mind. It's very pretty though. Um, Okie dokie. Do with this or this. If you liked this idea, tell me if you have rescued some silver platters. Uh, somebody was just saying that they rescued them. Phyllis said she just rescued them. Um, she's rescued a few. I have a hard time leaving them behind when I see them at um, Goodwill, especially if they have a beautiful shape or some intricate kind of like design around the edges. Um, then I almost can't stand it to leave without rescuing them. But hopefully I gave you a whole bunch of ideas and you are inspired and you've seen how easy it is. Um, you don't have to be an artist or anything like that to do these kind of projects. Come back later and look here in the comments if you would like to see close-up pictures because I'll get those this afternoon. Um, don't hesitate to ask any questions. Feel free to sprinkle this if you would like to your social media, especially if you have friends that like to rescue uh, old objects from thrift stores you know, garage sales, um, flea markets, or even from family and friends. <laughs> so feel free to tell them about this if you would like. Thank you to everyone who did stars. I really appreciate that. Uh, let me know if you would like my supply list and a replay of this video from the start. So all you have to do is just put your finger on it and it'll take you right back to the start of this video. You don't have to hunt it down. So maybe if you missed the beginning and you wanted to see the whole thing, just let me know. Alrighty, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day and thanks for joining me.